As the warmth of summer gradually gave way to cooler temperatures and the trees began to transform into a breathtaking array of autumnal hues, my two closest confidants, Emma and Lily and I embarked on an exhilarating journey along the legendary Appalachian Trail. Our primary objective was to bask in the awe-inspiring natural splendor and delve into the intriguing past and haunted sites along the way. With the looming prospect of college life and potential separation, we were determined to forge unforgettable memories that would provide comfort and solace during the upcoming transition. As we strolled along the winding trail, anticipation and curiosity filled the air. Our destination, the Harrisburg State Hospital, was the source of fascination and intrigue. Even as we chatted amiably and shared jokes, we couldn't shake off the excitement of exploring a place shrouded in rumors of poltergeist activity. To add to our enthusiasm, this location was prominently featured in the film Girl Interrupted, a beloved classic for all of us. We were eager to immerse ourselves in the world that once hosted the likes of Winona Ryder and Angelina Jolie and experience the haunting atmosphere that inspired such a great film. Our stroll carried us along the path, punctuated by the steady beat of our feet striking the ground. Engrossed in conversation, we reminisced about the varied cinematic scenes shot there and the emotions they had evoked in us. Our journey had become spiritual as we contemplated the interplay between real life and fictional worlds. Yet despite the breathtaking vistas we encountered, our curiosity was piqued by the looming presence of the Harrisburg State Hospital a haunting relic of days gone by. Its foreboding entrance beckoned us closer, compelling us to uncover its secrets. Standing in front of the dilapidated and decrepit building, it was hard to fathom the tumultuous and eerie tales surrounding it. The sun was gradually setting, casting long and ominous shadows that appeared to be the phantoms of the past reaching out to the present. Despite our unspoken apprehension, we shared resolute glances and embarked on the journey inside. The world inside the building appeared suspended in time, fueling our curiosity to explore further. A sudden and inexplicable shiver ran down my spine, resonating with the unease we all felt. Upon entering the building, a palpable weight seemed to settle upon us as though the air had absorbed years of despair and sorrow. Our footsteps reverberated through the halls, serving as a haunting reminder of the countless troubled minds and wounded souls that had once sought refuge within these walls. Each room we explored bore witness to the pain and grief that had permeated the space, the same walls themselves seemingly painted in layers of sadness and despair. It was as though the building held a mournful memory of its past inhabitants and their struggles. As we continued exploring the hospital's depths, inexplicable energy seemed to awaken within the building. Faint whispers and echoes of conversations from the past permeated the air around us. Despite the hospital's reputation for being a gloomy and foreboding place, we could hear the sounds of laughter and joy from times long gone. Doors creaked and shut as if being led by an unseen presence, guiding us deeper into the heart of the hospital's mysteries. Ava, the bravest of us, led us further into the abyss. As we turned a corner, a powerful, unseen force gripped her, lifting her from her feet and pinning her to the wall. Shock and terror gripped us as we watched her struggle against an invisible vice. Our shouts and pleas seemed to be devoured by the oppressive air. At that moment, the true horror of the place enveloped us. Cries of desperation had replaced our laughter. Emma and Lily screamed Ava's name, their voices a chorus of fear. And then as abruptly as it had begun, the force released its grip, and Ava crumpled to the ground, gasping for air and clutching her throat. Silently, our shared unease grew as we hurriedly made our way toward the hospital's exit. The oppressive atmosphere within the building seemed to be constricting us as if trying to prevent our escape. Finally, we burst through the doors and were instantly greeted by the enveloping darkness of the forest, which seemed to loom menacingly over us. As we embarked upon the trail we had once eagerly traversed, its once innocent allure had been replaced with a sense of foreboding, as if it were now a treacherous path leading us toward some unknown and evil presence. As we started to flee, my panicked breaths punctuating the silence, a guttural growl resonated from the shadows. I turned to see Emma and Lily disappearing, swallowed by the night. A scream pierced the air, a haunting symphony of horror. I called out their names, my voice a trembling plea, but there was no answer. They were gone. Regrettably, I was the solitary survivor of our perilous expedition into uncharted territory. As the dawn broke, the woods were shrouded in a dreary and desolate hue. I stumbled upon a deserted trail, 
and my heart was weighed down by grief and regret. Following my rescue and subsequent safekeeping, the burden of my comrade's absence seemed almost unbearable. As I reflect on the events of that ill-fated night, my mind is plagued by the haunting memories of the Harrisburg State Hospital. Though its physical structure has long since deteriorated, that night's echoes continue reverberating through the corridors of my psyche. The spirits that once inhabited the hospital and the evil soul that robbed me of my dear friends have become a part of my very being, interwoven into the very fabric of my existence. As I embark on a new chapter of my life as a college student, I carry with me the fond memories of our laughter and companionship and the darkness that forever bound my friends to the residual spirits of the past. The Forgotten Through the years, the native inhabitants of Jackson, a picturesque township nestled within the heart of Breathitt County, have somberly recounted a spine-tingling fable. The narrative tells the emergence of a pernicious phantom born out of a profound sense of disloyalty and now driven by a burning desire for retribution against the living. Despite its ominous overtones, the mythos remains shrouded in enigma and obscurity, leaving countless individuals to ponder whether it harbors any modicum of integrity. It has been quite a long time since I was a young child, and I witnessed the events shaping my town's history. It was during those distant days that I crossed paths with a stranger. His eyes seemed to carry a weight of weariness, which undoubtedly accumulated from a life spent traversing unknown roads. His clothes were tattered and worn, clearly having seen better days. In desperation, he implored me to offer him shelter from the raging storm unleashing its fury outside. During my younger years, when I was inexperienced and gullible, I inadvertently guided an unknown gentleman to the desolate orphanage that was notorious for its sorrowful past. As time passed, I gradually lost all recollection of the man's appearance, the specifics of his tale, and the remnants of his words slowly faded away like the soft murmurs of the breeze. Despite this, the account had already been ingrained into Jackson's history, becoming integral to his narrative. In the quiet of the night, I was inexplicably drawn to the abandoned orphanage that had long been left to decay. Despite its crumbling exterior, the building still held a certain allure, for within its walls lay secrets and untold stories. As I stepped inside, the air grew heavy with the weight of memories that lingered on, as if the spirits of the past still roamed the halls. Their forgotten whispers echoed like ethereal melodies, creating a haunting and awe-inspiring atmosphere. As I made my way deeper into the confines of the building, an unmistakable aura of spirits began to surround me. It was as if their presence had been waiting for me, lurking in the shadows and biding their time. Once jubilant and carefree, the echoes of their laughter now seemed tinged with a palpable sense of agony and despair, the remnants of a past that had been anything but kind to them. It quickly became clear to me that the spirits of these children had merged into a single entity, a manifestation of their collective yearning and resentment. I was quite surprised by the sudden shift in his laughter. It used to be so joyous, but now it seemed almost ominous. It was as if his eyes were piercing my very soul with their intense stare. I couldn't shake the feeling that he blamed me for unleashing some kind of darkness that had taken over him. It was as if he wanted to drag me down with him into the depths of despair. My heart was pounding with fear and adrenaline as I hurriedly departed from the orphanage, haunted by the eerie echoes of the specter's laughter. The sound had been twisted and warped by the passage of time, leaving a chilling promise of inevitable retribution. As I stepped out into the night, the wind carried the echoes of the laughter into the surrounding darkness, intensifying my unease and apprehension. As the years passed, it fell upon my shoulders to oversee the daily operations of my family's shop, a welcoming and comforting haven for weary travelers in the town of Jackson. Yet despite the solace it provided, the piercing stare of a vengeful stranger lingered in my mind, causing my heart to race with every new arrival. Nonetheless, I was determined to safeguard the well-being of every person seeking refuge within our humble abode. When individuals inquired about accommodations, I abstained from recommending the orphanage and instead proposed the Jackson Inn a decent room for a reasonable price and convenient location. It had come to my attention that the vindictive specter, no longer fixated solely on me, 
had transformed into a hostile force determined to exact revenge on anyone who dared to cross its trajectory. Its once mischievous cackles had transformed into a menacing aura, signaling its wrathful intentions. Jackson was forever altered by the presence of the lost children and the hitchhiker, their spirits becoming enmeshed with the very essence of the town. The orphanage stood as a bleak reminder of the hopelessness that permeated the area, its walls serving as a prison for tormented souls. As the wind carried the faint echoes of children's laughter, I couldn't help but wonder if my actions had sealed the town's fate for all time. The weight of responsibility hung heavily on my shoulders, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I had failed those who had come before me and those who would come after. As I walked down the streets of my hometown, my mind was consumed with the haunting sound of the stranger's laughter. It was a constant reminder of the irreversible choices we make in life. Even in the quiet corners of my thoughts, his chuckle echoed relentlessly, like an eerie melody seeking justice for long-forgotten misdeeds. The bone-chilling sound lingered, leaving an indelible mark on my psyche. Waverly Hills, a sacrifice in the shadows. With bated breath, Brian and I found ourselves standing in front of the imposing Waverly Hills Sanatorium, shrouded in darkness on a chilly Halloween night. The moon was hanging low in the sky, casting an eerie glow upon the desolate grounds and adding to the already spine-chilling atmosphere. The building's facade was a testament to its rich history, but it was also a haunting reminder of the souls that had been forgotten within its walls. As we stood there, a sense of anticipation mixed with unease washed over us, knowing full well that this was a night when the line between the living and the departed was at its thinnest. Amidst a sea of intrigued onlookers, we found ourselves in the midst of a Halloween-themed tour. The air was thick with anticipation, as people chatted in hushed tones and eagerly awaited the next chapter of the tour. The tales of the sanatorium's grim past were nothing short of electrifying, as they ignited our imaginations and sent shivers down our spines. As we followed the guide through the labyrinthine corridors, we were regaled with stories of the unspeakable horrors that had unfolded within these very walls. It was as though we could feel the weight of the building's tragic history with every step we took, as though the pain of those who had suffered before us lingered in the air. Despite the cautionary warning from our guide, the allure of the unknown proved too great to resist. Seeking solace in Brian's reassuring grip, we slowly made our way towards the obscure and enigmatic tunnels. As we ventured further away from the safety of the group, the guide's voice gradually faded into the distance, leaving us alone with our curiosity and the dimly lit corridors. As we ventured further into the core of the sanatorium, the temperature dropped considerably. The walls seemed to be inching closer, and the air was heavy with the scent of moisture and decomposition. The shadows danced eerily on the walls, and the sound of our footsteps reverberated spookily throughout the still corridors. As Brian and I made our way around the bend, we were abruptly confronted with a flickering apparition that seemed to manifest out of thin air. Its silhouette was shrouded in mist, and it exuded an otherworldly chill that made my skin crawl. Instinctively, I clutched onto Brian's hand with a vice-like grip, my heart hammering in my chest as the spectral figure dissolved into the murky shadows, leaving us with an unsettling sense of unease and trepidation. As we ventured onward, I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the echoes of the past that seemed to reverberate around us. There was an intangible quality to them, like a veil of mist that hinted at countless tales of days gone by. Despite the palpable weight of history around us, Brian's concern for my well-being was palpable in his faltering tone. With a nod of affirmation, I turned my attention back to the dimly lit passageways that stretched out before us, seemingly without end. Suddenly, we stumbled upon a room aglow with an unnatural light. In its center stood an evil figure, his eyes twin flames of malevolence that pierced through the darkness. His laughter, a maddening cacophony, echoed through the room, raising the hairs on the back of my neck. Panic gripped us both, and as we turned to flee, I felt the darkness of his presence clawing at my very soul. The pursuit was relentless, our frantic footsteps echoing through the corridors as we navigated the labyrinthine passageways. The walls seemed to warp and twist, disorienting us at every turn. The man's laughter pursued us, a haunting soundtrack to our terror. 
As we ran, we found ourselves outside the hospital, headed to a corridor known as the Death Tunnel, a place rumored to be a passage of despair. The walls seemed to close in, the air heavy with malevolence. Brian's grip on my hand never wavered as we sprinted, driven by a primal instinct to escape. But as the darkness swallowed us, the man's laughter surrounded us, echoing off the walls in a symphony of madness. Brian's voice rang out, his words clear and determined as he faced the evil force head on. His sacrifice was a shock, the ritual he initiated plunging us into darkness. I screamed a desperate plea as the ritual consumed Brian's essence. His body convulsed, his eyes void of recognition. The room seemed to close in on us, shadows dancing along the walls as Brian's form contorted in ways no human body should. And then, in a breath, it was over. Brian's lifeless body fell to the ground, and the evil figure dissipated into the shadows, leaving behind an unsettling stillness. Tears streamed down my face as I knelt by his side, the weight of his sacrifice a heavy burden upon my heart. As I ascended the tunnel and was soon met and received assistance from the staff, the police and paramedics were called. After taking my statement on the events that transpired that night, the authorities went to retrieve Brian's body, but to their surprise. However, evident signs of a struggle remained. There was no longer the body of my fiancé. Days turned to weeks as I searched for any trace of Brian, my grief mingling with confusion and anger. The sanatorium remained silent, offering no answers, only the echoes of its haunted history. I walked its corridors, the whispers of the past a constant companion. The night at Waverly Hills he had forever altered me. Brian's sacrifice haunted my dreams, his memory etched into the very walls of the sanatorium. The town whispered of my loss, of the courage he had shown in the face of darkness. I return now every year a twisted anniversary of a happier time now forever marred in darkness. As I walked away from Waverly Hills, the echo of that fateful night resonated in my heart. The horror of that Halloween had left an indelible mark that could never truly be erased. I will forever carry the weight of Brian's sacrifice. As I faced the future, his memory would remain a beacon of courage in the face of the unknown. A reminder that some darkness could only be conquered through selfless acts of bravery. Sarah and Mike a couple with a thirst for adventure, had made their way to the land between the lakes, a place shrouded in mystery where the tranquility of the moonlit scenery was juxtaposed by the ominous presence of darkness lurking beneath the surface. They were eager to spend their Labor Day weekend camping in this wild and untamed wilderness. They were particularly drawn to the legend of a werewolf massacre in the 1980s, which had since become a memorable part of the lore surrounding this place. As the sun set and the darkness crept in, a sense of discomfort descended upon the campsite. The moon's glow cast unnerving shadows that swayed like phantoms through the trees. Sarah and Mike huddled close by the campfire, yet even its comforting heat failed to dispel the chill that seemed to clutch at their bones. Peculiar noises, resembling snarls and growls, reverberated from the obscurity, melding with the mournful whispers of the wind. Each morning as they emerged from their tent, they were greeted with fresh tracks etched into the earth. The imprints were eerily reminiscent of those belonging to a wolf and were deeply embedded in the damp ground, slowly but surely closing in on their makeshift shelter. These tracks served as a chilling reminder of a relentless presence that refused to remain concealed in the darkness, gradually encroaching upon their sanctuary daily. An eerie silence sets as the sun sets and darkness envelops the surroundings. But gradually, the unsettling sounds of unknown creatures emerge, becoming more prominent with each passing moment. The once cheerful group is now gripped by fear and unease, their laughter replaced by uneasy glances between them. What was once dismissed as mere myths and legends has now taken on a sinister and terrifying form, lurking in the shadows and playing on their deepest fears. A palpable sense of malice pulsed around them as Sarah and Mike meandered through the dense forest, the night air was thick with a foreboding feeling, suggesting the possibility of something more sinister than mere fables. They clung to each other tightly, providing a fragile shield against the encroaching sense of dread. However, even within their bond, the fear grew incessantly, like a toxic flower blooming in the darkness. As the sun set on the final evening of their journey, the moon rose high into the sky, casting an eerie glow over the campsite. 
The dense forest surrounding them was moving, with rustling noises emanating from the bushes and trees. The two friends exchanged a meaningful glance, both aware of the potential dangers lurking in the shadows. Who or what could be hiding in the darkness, waiting to pounce on unsuspecting travelers like themselves? The tension was palpable as they huddled together, unsure what the night would bring. As the darkness of the night deepened and the sounds around them grew louder and more chaotic, a sudden snarl erupted from the nearby trees. The group's hearts began to race as the tension in the air became almost palpable, signaling the eerie presence they had been trying to uncover had now become an overwhelming reality, trapped within the unsettling wilderness surrounding them. As the eerie and melancholy melody permeated the space, unforeseen and startling veracity came to light. Sarah and Mike's eyes met, and the expression on her face betrayed an emotion that went beyond the mere sensation of fear. Suddenly her body twisted and contorted, transforming into a creature that challenged all conventional beliefs, a werewolf. Mike was completely caught off guard by the surprising sight before him. The stories that had led them to this location were now intermingled with the shock of what he was witnessing. He stumbled backward, attempting to process the incredible truth before his eyes. Sarah, once a familiar face, now appeared vastly different and resembled the legendary creatures that had long been spoken of in this region. As the realization dawned on them, time seemed to stand at a standstill. Their understanding of the world shattered as the truth washed over them like a tidal wave, confirming the existence of legends and nightmares beyond their wildest imagination. Where Sarah's eyes once held a glimmer of humanity, they now appeared as those of a destructive creature, bred to wreak havoc on humankind. Amidst the serene darkness of the night, Sarah's desperate cries reverberated through the empty woods while Mike stood motionless, stunned by the events that had just transpired. The realization that Sarah's kin was responsible for the dark secrets that pervaded these woods was a crushing blow to his already overburdened mind. The once pure love between them and her family's honorable reputation was now stained by the evil that lurked in the shadows. As Mike wandered through the land between the lakes, he couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The land's secrets seemed to lurk around every corner, and the reality of his situation had become a living nightmare. His emotions were a tangled mess of love and fear, as the haunting legends of the area had become all too real, twisting their fate in the most chilling way imaginable. Sarah returned to Mike's side as the moon's radiance engulfed the barren terrain. Her gaze was a fascinating amalgamation of human and animalistic features, revealing her unwavering determination. She sank her teeth deep into his flesh in a moment of compassionate rebellion against destiny, forging an unbreakable bond between them as kindred spirits of the nocturnal realm. Together they embraced their newfound identities, bound by a love that defied reality and the whispers of the past. The tracks of the past, once marked by fear, now led to a future paved with uncertainty and the thrill of the unknown. In the heart of the land between the lakes, legends whispered secrets and the darkness held a love story like no other. Sitting by the crackling fire, my father's eyes sparkled with mischief. The scent of wood smoke mixed with the lingering aroma of family stories this campfire had shared. Son, he began, his voice a blend of nostalgia and humor. There's a story about your granddad that's been handed down for generations. I leaned closer, my curiosity piqued. Tell me, Pa. With a chuckle, he began recounting the timeless tale that had become a cherished tradition within our family. Years ago, before my birth, your grandfather Emmett embarked on an exciting adventure. He was a young man from Kentucky's Appalachian region with a bold spirit and a lively demeanor. Our family had a hidden secret in the hills, a moonshine still located in Hunting Creek which had been kept secret for generations. Emmett had heard rumors about a legendary still created by his great-grandfather, famous for making moonshine. Driven to discover his family's legacy, he embarked on a journey anticipating experiencing the exhilaration of untamed spirits and joyful laughter. Emmett relied on a map that appeared to be sketched by an unsteady squirrel to find his way through the thick forest and winding paths of the holler. Along the route, he encountered legends of shimmering jars filled with potent moonshine, that appeared to embody the very spirit of the mountains. As he ventured further into the holler, the scenery became a maze of dense foliage and tall trees. The sounds of nature were interrupted by the rustling of leaves and the distant call of a bird. 
However, that's when things became strange. Legend has it that a moonshine was still protected by a ghostly being known for his mischievous humor. He was nicknamed Old Ruckus because of the rowdy nature of his spectral tricks. Even though Emmett had been warned he didn't take them seriously and laughed them off, he was determined to show his bravery and get his hands on the famous moonshine. Emmett finally found the missing still as the sun set, and the holler was covered in dim light. He let out a loud whoop of triumph as he held up a shiny jar, its contents gleaming in the fading light. However, his joy was short-lived as laughter erupted around him. Surprised, he turned around to see old Ruckus standing before him. Emmett's determination weakened as he watched the ghostly figure clad in shabby overalls and a straw hat play an endless stream of pranks. Buckets of water mysteriously spilled, ropes twisted into knots and sticks floated through the air. The ghost's laughter reverberated, adding to the absurdity of the situation. Emmett's stubbornness would not let him be defeated. With a twinkle in his eye, just like old Ruckus, he challenged the ghost to a prank battle. Laughter filled the holler as Emmett and the spirit engaged in a playful competition of wit. As the first light of dawn appeared, Emmett and old Ruckus sat beside each other, gasping for breath but smiling widely as if they were old pals. The spectral guardian had finally found someone who matched his unrelenting drive and unwavering spirit in the young man. Emmett departed from the holler that day with a jar of moonshine and a story that would endure for generations. As he recounted his tale, he emphasized that surprising bonds can be formed in the most improbable settings. My father finished his story and gave me a knowing look. And that's how our family got the best moonshine in the holler and befriended a playful ghost, he said with a smile. I couldn't stop laughing as we hung out by the fire. The story was hilarious and mixed old-school vibes and spooky stuff. It would become a classic in our family, just like the homemade moonshine we were sipping on. Moments like this make me grateful for the sense of togetherness and fun that runs deep in our family. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long, ominous shadows over the fields of our remote farming community. For generations, we had followed a grim and secret tradition. Every fall, we sacrificed a soul to ensure our crops thrived. And every fall, we dressed a scarecrow in the victim's clothes. This year, the dreaded honor fell upon me. Whispers of my impending fate had circulated through the village for weeks, and I couldn't escape the hushed conversations, the pitying glances. On the night of the ritual, the moon hung low in the sky, painting everything in eerie shades of silver. I was adorned in the scarecrow's tattered garments, a makeshift mask concealing my face. My heart raced as they led me to the field, the air thick with the scent of harvest. The villagers, faces twisted with anticipation and dread encircled us, chanting incantations that sent shivers down my spine. I stumbled forward, trembling with fear, and stood beside the scarecrow, whose stitched grin seemed to mock my despair. The ritual reached its dreadful climax, and I felt a terrible weight settle upon my soul. The crows, drawn by the sinister energy, descended upon me with a frenzy I could hardly bear. Their beaks and talons tore at my flesh, and my anguished screams merged with the unholy chorus of their cawing. As the crows devoured me, I felt my life slipping away, my vision fading into a deep, chilling darkness. I was the price the village paid for their prosperity, just another victim of a macabre tradition. My last thoughts were of the bountiful harvest that would soon flourish, nourished by the harvest of my soul. As my consciousness faded, I couldn't help but wonder if the villagers ever truly understood the depth of the darkness they embraced, or the profound sorrow they inflicted on the chosen ones who became nothing more than scarecrows in the fields. The old farmhouse stood in the heart of the countryside, centuries of history etched into its weathered walls. It was a place where time seemed to slow, and the land bore the memories of generations. But it also held a secret, a secret embodied by the sinister scarecrow that watched from the fields. My family had moved into the farmhouse in the dead of winter, eager to escape the chaos of city life. The countryside seemed peaceful, idyllic even, but the tranquility was misleading. It was only when the nights grew colder and the shadows lengthened that we realized the true nature of the scarecrow. The first hint of something amiss came when our daughter, Emily, started acting strangely. She developed an eerie bond with the scarecrow. Each day she'd spend hours whispering secrets to it, as if it were an old friend. We thought it was an innocent childhood fascination, but it soon took a sinister turn. One fateful night, I woke to Emily's blood-curdling scream, 
Rushing to her room, I found her tangled in the scarecrow's embrace, its straw fingers wrapped around her throat. In the pale moonlight, I saw her lifeless eyes, staring blankly into the distance. Terrified, we tried to burn the cursed scarecrow, but it was unscathed by the flames. It simply returned to the field, watching our every move with an unsettling hunger in its eyes. As the days passed, we realized that Emily's soul was not gone. It was trapped within the scarecrow. She was an unwanted guest in its cursed world, forever bound to the guardian of the field. Our once idyllic farmhouse became a prison of sorrow, haunted by the memory of our daughter's laughter. The sinister scarecrow remained, a reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of our peaceful countryside retreat. It was a place where time stood still, and where the line between the living and the dead blurred into a chilling nightmare.